I'm going to show you how I added Minecraft's missing crafting recipes. Minecraft has a ton of items that are either hard to find or straight up impossible to get without cheats, so I fixed that. But not only did I make whatever recipes came to mind, I also tried to keep all of them balanced and fair so that you can't get a lead early on by crafting an item you shouldn't have yet. A lot of the recipes in this video are going to revolve around a few key items, so let's introduce those first. Glowstone is an item that will show up a couple times throughout the video, and I thought a neat way of obtaining it would be by grinding up glowberries. This makes glowstone a fully renewable resource that can work in redstone farms. You can use glowstone like normal or in the new glow lichen and glow ink sack recipes. Leather. I've always thought that you should be able to make leather from rotten flesh, but just crafting might be too overpowered. To make it more complicated to automatically farm, rotten flesh has to be smelted to become leather, which actually kind of makes sense anyways. Bottles of enchanting are really interesting items that I think should exist in survival Minecraft. They also hold a lot of potential for being in the crafting recipes of late game items as well, as you'll see in a moment. You can make one of these by mixing a splash potion with a gas tear and dragon's breath. If you don't know, you can get dragon's breath by bottling one of the ender dragon's attacks. This recipe should make XP bottles easy to obtain late game, but difficult to mass produce. Totems of Undying are another item that I'm going to be using in recipes quite a bit. Since they're not actually that difficult to get from raid farms, I didn't make them too, too expensive. Plus, everyone that uses them usually has multiple already anyways, but the blaze powder requirement does make it a little tough to make early game, which is good. So now that those are out of the way, let's speed through some of the obvious ones. And by the way, we just skyrocketed from 200,000 to over 600,000 subscribers in two weeks, so why not make sure you're subscribed and keep it going? Chainmail armor in Minecraft is super interesting as it's so difficult to obtain. It's never worth it, however, since it's so weak, so I figured simply making it craftable with chains is a nice way to get slightly weaker iron armor for slightly less cost. Name tags are a super popular item in the game, but can only be randomly found in abandoned chests. I dislike that you can be limited to this item with RNG, so I added a recipe for it that uses paper, ink, and string. Now nothing is stopping you from making an army of pigs named Jeff. Tridents are a super cool item in Minecraft, but no one ever seems to use them since they're so annoying to obtain. Basic tridents aren't even that powerful, so I figured a simple recipe of three iron ingots with some prismarine shards is perfect to bring back their popularity. Late game enchantments are what make them cool anyways. Speaking of interesting items people never use, I gave horse armor its own simple recipe similar to normal armor. And of course you can't have horse armor recipes without saddle recipes. Why do we not have that anyways? Trying obsidian can be obtained by surrounding a gas tier in obsidian. Magma blocks are now just lava infused netherrack. And with mushrooms, you can make all red and all brown mushroom blocks or mix the two to make mushroom stems. And if you mix a mushroom stem with glowstone, you get shroom light. And since mushrooms and now glowstone are renewable resources, that means you can make shroom light farms. Grass is a widely used block in Minecraft, though I think needing silk touch to get it is a bit much. So now you can just mix dirt with moss carpet to get some. Another thing you see a lot is people with silk touch not having enough cobblestone. I figured a nice way to save people's time is to add cobblestone to stone's stone cutter menu. A lot of people like to build with concrete powder instead of concrete, so I figured smelting concrete back into powder could be pretty helpful to a lot of people. And for the last of the obvious things, you can now make bells, you can turn oak saplings into dead bushes, you can reverse wool into string, and you can turn strings into cobwebs, which I guess makes cobwebs a renewable resource. Time for the fun stuff. If you coat obsidian in a netherite block in a smithing table, you can make a piece of bedrock. Just keep in mind that you won't be able to break it without redstone, so if you need to, I'll link a tutorial up here. Is your end portal too far from your base? No problem. You can now make end portal frames to recreate your own end portal. You can actually remove the portal frames and the portal itself just by growing a giant red mushroom inside of it. And we of course have to try making spawners. Mixing a totem of undying with some experience turns it into a player head. If you surround one in rotten flesh, bones, or spider eyes, it turns into a mob head. And if you then cover one of these in eggs, it turns into a spawn egg. But uh, there's a specific reason we need to make spawn eggs. So how Minecraft works works is if I try to make something like slabs right here, you can see I can only make the bottom half of slabs. I can't make slabs that automatically place on the top because inside of here, you can't put any NBT data on this block. So for example, if I wanted to make a minecart with a chest, it would always have to be an empty chest. You couldn't make a minecart chest with stuff in it. And so our issue is that we want to make spawners. And uh, you see if I grab a spawner over here. Wait, if I give myself a spawner right here, you can see without any NBT data, it only does pigs. We don't want pigs. If we open up this crafting table, we make our bottle of enchanting right here. We mix it with a totem of undying that gives us a player head. We surround this player head in bones and that gives us our skull. And I forgot to grab chains and we mix this skull with chains and it gives us a knowledge book. But you may be wondering, this isn't a spawner. Well, obviously it's a knowledge book, but what happens is whenever you take it, 
you get a bunch of weird data pack enchantment stuff and that gives you a skeleton spawner command block you turn around and you place it and skeleton spawner there we go but um there's a small issue if you try to do this in survival you may notice that uh you can't place command blocks in survival mode ever no like no matter what so here goes that idea and so some of you may be thinking why don't you just use a command that slash gives you the spawner and well the proper way of doing that is to give myself a spawner with spawn data right here and the id would be a zombie and you can see this all checks out it's yellow you type it in place it down and it's big turns out it's literally just not possible to slash give yourself a spawner that has the mob already changed so sadly our workaround is going to have to be just making a normal spawner around a totem of undying because it's going to make infinite pig so it's got to be a little expensive and then you can also just craft a normal skeleton spawn egg and you can just change the spawner like that so now let's test this in survival real quick just to make sure Okay, you can do this in survival, okay. I also made it so that you can mine spawners with silk touch, but they'll just turn back into pig spawners, so you'll need to make the egg again for the same reasons as before. You can now access the secret redstone skulk sensors early with glow ink sac stems, an ender pearl body, and a redstone repeater center. Just try not to kill all your friends with the secret TNT minecart trap. Enchanted golden apples used to be craftable in the game, but were deemed too overpowered for how cheap the recipe was, so I made it harder. It now requires an apple, six gold blocks, dragon's breath, and a totem of undying. I figured an enchanted golden apple was stronger than a totem of undying when I considered if I'd rather fight someone who has an extra life or someone that's almost literally invincible for minutes at a time. And of course, the most anticipated one is the elytra recipe. This uses six phantom membrane for wings, a nether star base, and an inrod to hold it all together. I figured this was a very fair recipe considering it requires you to enable phantoms, access the end, and fight a wither. If anything, elytra are of equal if not more value than a beacon, so an extra wither fight shouldn't be a big hassle late game. So here's how to actually install this. You'll start by clicking the Planet Minecraft page in the description and you'll scroll down to the download data pack button right here. We're going to save the file and that will put it in your downloads folder. We're going to right click and extract here. You're going to need WinRAR or 7-zip or anything that can deal with .zip files like this and it should just have the folder of the data pack right here. We're going to open Minecraft and we're going to make a new world and then under this data pack section we're going to click on that open our folder, and then we're gonna drag and drop our data pack folder onto this little tile right here. It'll ask you if you're sure you wanna do that, and you are. So you wanna move this over from available to selected. This is the most important thing here. Make sure it's all on the right. Click done. And now whenever you create your world, you should see a little thing pop up right there. So you missed cast extra vanilla recipes data pack loaded successfully. If you see this, everything should be working fine. 